Right, here we are. We're back at this disused kind of waste ground spot that we've been to before with the X-Max and the GX1 two-wheel drive buggy. Also had the uh, TRX4 here in the past. And uh, as you can see, they use they seem to use this area for kind of four-wheel drive driving, a lot of dumped rubbish. But anyway, here we have the Traxxas UDR. It's the first time I've used this truck on film. I used it very briefly um, on a field when I was using my Logi 5T, the fifth scale of 50ccs at a big meet, open field. It was terrible. Briefly used it on 4S and 6S and it just felt really slow and rubbish to be honest. So I'm hoping to be convinced otherwise now in this kind of terrain, which is maybe a bit more interesting and a bit more suited to a UDR. Um, the other thing just to say briefly is this is being filmed now on a Hero 7 Black Edition. So it's using the Hyper Smooth it's hanging off the bottom of my controller. It's how I often used to film, and, and if I'm on my own driving anything, it's the only way really to film. So uh, hopefully it'll make the footage a bit smoother. Hyper smooth, what's it like? Tell me in the comments, is it any good? Does it work? All right, guys, let's see how this thing goes. First on 4S, let's see what it's like on 4S. probably where the UDR kind of for me theoretically stands out it's what it's going to be good at right this kind of humpy bumpy rough bad terrain I mean look at these ruts and bumps you know these are that's my hand they're big ruts and it's kind of getting over it quite happily so that's what it's for and actually to be fair it's, it's going well it's decent it's impressive the way it handles this kind of rough stuff very soft suspension obviously as you'd as you know all that travel
man. Right, well, that's 4S. So I haven't hit LVC, but I'm gonna stop it there and put 6S in it. Now, I've gotta say, I'm actually, my mind's already been changed a little bit here. There's one common theme that you're gonna notice, and that's rolling. Now, it's narrow, it's very realistic looking, and it does roll a bit, but what I did is someone on the reveal vid, I did a little reveal vid, if you haven't seen that already, just talking about the truck. Obviously, I got it used, cost me 400 pounds and so on. I go on a bit about that in that video. So if you're interested, take a look. But basically, it was pointed out to me in that video that the truck looked a little bit high. I can't remember your name, sorry, in the comments, but thank you for your comment. You suggested lowering it down. I had a look at it and I thought, how do you lower it down? The only way to lower it down is to go on to no preload, I guess, and I think that's what you meant. So that's what I've done. I've put it on zero preload and it has made it sit a little bit lower. And after driving on the grass, when it literally flipped at every opportunity, it's a slicker surface here, obviously, so that's not gonna happen so much and it's still rolling, but I think it has helped. So thank you for that comment. 4S, I'm actually relatively impressed for bashing around. It's good, and I know that Kevin Talbot, shout out to Kevin Talbot, excellent videos on his channel. Um, he loves the drifting, he talks about drifting quite a bit with this, and I can see why. Is it the way it's set up, it does like to drift, and you can actually, on a slick surface, you can kind of use it like a drifter, and actually get a drift going, uh, that you can control up to a point, so that's good. So actually, my impressions, they're changing slightly already, on this first use. So that's 4S. Let's put some 6S in and see what it's like on 6S. All right, it's in a bit of a state, but wow. Got some 6S in there. It's a tight squeeze, it's got to be said, to even get them in there. But uh, we're in, so see what it's like.
so a bit of damage after that roll. I'm not exactly sure what I've done. Let's turn it upside down. We've got a wonky axle. It looks like this, this part here has got bent round. Yeah, okay. So I think that's all it was. This this little part has been is it broken? I don't think it's broken. Obviously the body has pulled out here at the back on this screw, which is the only screw holding it on now, I guess. Yeah, because the side screw is already broken. So I think we're okay. I think we're all right. Let's have a look. I think we're okay. That's full, full throttle. Oh. Okay, well, on, on uh, bashes like this, I never like to break my stuff, to be honest. I don't, I don't jump to break it. I don't like breaking stuff. But at the same time, we got a big mound here behind us. 6S, let's give it a little jump. Let's see what it jumps like on 6S on a, on, a, on a mound like this. The ground's pretty hard. It's a bit stony, it's a bit rocky. It's not the best surface to to have a car survive i suppose but i think it's probably better than concrete um and skate parks which i'm not a fan of and I, I don't think i would jump this at a skate park actually as i just hate that slap onto concrete but anyway regardless of that let's see what it jumps like on uh, on six set Okay, so that's just poked out of the battery tray. Batteries are okay though, they're, they're protected by this plate. It's pretty good really. It's a massive tangle of wires here to get my, my 6S in with the adapters I'm using. There's a bit of heat on this, this drive shaft and the... That's all right. Right. See if I can squeeze this back on, do a couple more jumps. Right, I did just notice 
at um, both these little sway bar links, which I've heard are, are a bit of a weak spot. These two links here. And you can see that they're massively bent. <laughs> that, that one's like a, a kind of banana. And that one's pretty bad too. Um, maybe they're easy to bend back. I don't know if there's an upgrade for them. I'll see if I can bend them back and get the batteries back in and give it a couple more jumps. But uh, if not, that'll be it. Another issue that I've heard about quite a bit is shocks leaking. And I've just noticed that, I don't know if you can see in there, but that shock is leaking, it's wet at the bottom. So is that one. So is this one here and that one here. You can see in the kind of dust, there's, there's leaking oil. It's not a big leak, but I see that people are, are complaining of that a little bit about the UDR. And I suppose there's a little bit of evidence here about it. I don't know about the fronts. They do look a bit moist, definitely at the bottom. So yeah. A bit, a bit of shock leakage, there's ways to deal with that. It's a bit of an annoyance, to be honest. Especially when you've got eight shocks to deal with. It's quite a lot to mess around with, but be aware of that. Right, so they did bend back pretty easy. They're still a little bit bent, but they were easy to bend back. So I've bent them back. Let's give it a couple more jumps and then I'm out of here. Okay, so we'll forget that. <laughs> I bent those links back and got the battery tray back in. I tried to start it and you can see what's happening. So basically, I've obviously got a drivetrain issue somewhere. That wheel looks pretty wobbly as well, doesn't it? I don't know if that's just the wheel or if that's something else. So I've got basically on throttle, on light throttle, I've got the rear moving, the front's moving. So I guess the rear diff, maybe I've munched the rear diff because this wheel's not, oh yeah, this wheel won't turn. This wheel is wedged and it won't turn at all. So, okay. Right, so that's basically it. You can still hear it humming probably. It, it survived in, for the most part. I've got a drivetrain issue of some sort. I don't know what it is. Maybe the rear diff, I'm not sure. But I abused it really, let's face it. But I mean, I think that's the thing with any ape scale or this kind of scale, you take things like, God, the body is, the body is. Uh, a lot of this was already like it, but obviously I've made it a lot worse. So that body's gonna have to come off. I'm gonna do some shoe gooing on it and, and dry wool tape, try and make it a bit better, clean it up. And I'm going to try running it without the body actually and see what it's like because I know a lot of people do that and I can see why it's because it's a nice body and it gets broken pretty easy so you know that's not ideal so that's what I'm going to do clean it up run it without the body sort the drivetrain out see what that issue is but yeah in general it's a fun truck to use it's got some very impressive features things like the way it handles rough terrain like this I mean you can see around here it's not it's not in any way smooth anywhere. It's a fun drifter. It looks great, but it's definitely not the amazing Traxxas, uh, awesome car that they like to say it is. Same with all a lot of these RC cars, not to go into one, but a lot of people only seem to say the good things about these cars. And at the end of the day, if you buy it, you don't want to go on, on, on someone's opinion and all they say is it's great. You've got to have some rounded opinion, I think. And for me, first bash, it's more fun than I thought it was going to be. It rolls less, but you'll see in the video it rolls a lot. Uh, it's a fun handling truck. It jumps pretty well, actually. It's got decent power, especially for bashing. Maybe not on the out in the open. It's a bit slow for, for speed runs, but it's got enough for, our, um, for this kind of rough terrain, for sure. Um, especially on 6S. In this, you know, unless you want to destroy the car, you, you can't be all out on 6S. 
it survived it's pretty durable i think most traxxas cars are pretty durable actually that's a generalization but they they do know how to make a decent rc car so yeah that's it for me first bash hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think of the, of the udr and let me know what you think of the hero 7 uh, slow motion i fiddled about with and um the uh I can't think of what it's called. The Hypersmooth. Is Hypersmooth any good? Has it made my footage any better? All right, so take it easy, guys. Hope you're all good. Have a great weekend. Have a great week or whatever day it is you are in. And I'll catch up with you on the next video. See you later.